Hello everyone and welcome back to J1 Aviation. So it's another scenario training and today we're talking about engine failures. So when you're faced with a real or imaginary engine failure, remember your acronyms, right? ABC or maybe you use ABCD or ABCDE or what about ABCDEF with F meaning you are fantastic. So there are variations of all of these different acronyms, right? And it doesn't matter which one you use. The point is that you have a plan and you act quickly and you act decisively. So let's look at each one of these. So A, no matter which acronym you use, is always for airspeed, right? Establish best glide and do it quickly. So the quicker you do this, the more options you have. Every instant you aren't at best glide speed, you are reducing your options. There are many ways to lose altitude after an engine failure, but there's not much you can do to bring it back once you've lost it. In addition, the time you have to troubleshoot is reducing, right? So one little trick to qu quickly get to best glide speed is to know how much trim to apply as you pull the power back in practice. So often a training aircraft, maybe three swipes of the trim or three rotations will get the airplane close to best glide speed. And then B is for best place to land. Now, as a good pilot, you should always be considering adequate landing locations when you're flying, right? So if this is you and you're a good pilot, potentially part of your checklist is already done here. But if not, scan the entire area around you, preferably for an airport, but if not, a location that will best ensure a successful outcome. Ideally, a flat, open field without any obvious approach obstruction, such as trees, power lines, or structures, that would be your best bet. And remember also your best landing location could be behind you. So don't ignore natural blind spots in your search. And then if you're flying with GPS or say for flight, these tools can also help you find good emergency landing areas. And then don't move on to C until your aircraft is flying towards a landing area at the best glide speed. And then depending on when the engine failure occurred, you might only have time for A and B, right? So always fly the airplane first. And then C is for checklist. Now this assumes you have plenty of altitude to run through the engine failure checklist. If you experience an engine failure at very low altitude, you might be lucky to only get through a few memory items or possibly there's only time to fly the plane and that's okay. So first, should be your memory items and then potentially these could even be done simultaneously while you pitch for best airspeed and find the best place to land and then after your memory items are complete then you can run through the engine out checklist so those are your abc's now sometimes you hear a b c d so then what's d then <clears throat> so d is for declare declare an emergency with whoever you're talking to if anyone if you're talking to ATC, then this is straightforward, right? Time permitting, provide as many details of your location as possible, so that way help can be provided. ATC may even ask you follow-up questions per their procedures, right? But don't feel pressure to respond. Your first obligation is to fly the plane, second is to navigate, and then third is to communicate. So if you aren't talking to ATC, even just announcing on the local frequency or emergency frequency, Another aircraft may hear your transmission and to be able to call for additional ground assistance. If you are talking to ATC, things they'll be looking for would be things like, you know, your aircraft and location, the nature of the emergency, and any requests you may have, souls on board, and fuel remaining. And then E. So I've seen E mean execute or exit. Exit meaning things like preparing for exit, right? crack the door so it doesn't get jammed, things like that. But I kind of like execute, right? Execute your plan. Basically, do what you are trained to do and do it well. All of your training is hinging on this moment. Um, so things like airspeed, don't get too slow. Don't try to stretch the glide and stall the plane. Don't bang too much when you are slow. Don't spin it into the ground. Continue flying to your point of landing, you know? Consider the wind direction. And if possible, you know, set yourself up for a nice downward base and final so the landing will feel as natural as possible. And then, you know, flaps of course are recommended if they can be lowered to minimize your forward speed. Minimum forward speed lessens the severity of the deceleration process, right? And then as you get closer to touchdown, continue to have positive control, fly the plane to the landing site as far as you can. Don't worry about trying to save the airplane. And then the only th other thing I might add 
in this situation is just to practice your emergency procedures. Practice simulating an engine failure. Practice establishing best glide. Practice picking a field and seeing how it looks as you glide toward and you're still 500 to 1,000 feet above the field, right? You probably have a pretty good idea if it's gonna have worked out or not. Practice power off 180s to a landing, right? And be familiar with your emergency procedure checklist. So it's easy to kind of ignore them and don't do them as much after you get your license. But it's worthwhile to fam be familiar with them and proficient at practicing these items. So there you go. I hope you only ever have practice emergency engine failures and not real ones. Thanks everyone for watching today. We'll hope you join us on a future flight and thanks for flying J1 Aviation.